Portions of Aqua Kids have been produced with the cooperation of the National Estuarine Research Reserve System. So, ready to make a difference? Building a better planet starts with you. As our Great Lakes adventure continues, one of the biggest problems that harm Lake Superior are microplastics, which are small plastics in the water. Now let's go find out what's being done to solve this problem. We're here now with Dr. Rios. So Dr. Rios, can you please explain the issue of microplastics in this area? Okay, that we are uh, doing is looking for the microplastic that Noah already um, is um, defining like a very tiny, tiny, small plastic, like a five millimeters or lower. Okay. And then we want to see if we can find some microplastic floating here in the Lake Superior, because remember, everything that is floating is food. And then the fish can eat at this, and we don't know what's going on later with the fish or with us when we eat it. Doctor, where do the microplastics come from? The microplastic has different sources. One could be the uh, whole container plastic that is breaking and breaking all could be from the manufacture, the pre-production pellets, all could be from the cosmetic products that we know now, you know, it's very, very tiny uh, micro bits, or in the ocean that you're observing is the big animals buy it, the whole plastic, and then the big containers of plastic, and then this can produce another source for the microplastic. So if we eat a fish that's been feeding on these toxic microplastics, that's a problem for us as well. Yes, maybe, and this is the hypothesis. Uh, we really don't know. So after you collect these microplastics, do you do research with them? Yes, we collected the microplastics and we know, uh, we do the extraction to see what is the concentration of the toxic compounds. We can do the identification and the quantification of these toxic compounds. And that uh, we are doing with the fish is we catch the fish, we open the fish the, and look at the in the stomach to see if we can find uh, microplastic inside. So one of the main problems with this must be the collection process, right? Because they're so small. Yes, they are very small, the, the sizes of the um, fibers of the microplastic, but the plastic has some electrostatic and then has the tendency to go together because they don't like it, the water. They are hydrophobic, they don't like it. And then this is what the tendency and accumulate. So filtration plants can't even process these because they're so small. Yes, of course, because the wastewater treatment plant, the main objective was to clean from bacteria, not clean it out from plastic or microplastic. And it is true, the sizes is so small. And, you know, if we want to collect all these fibers, we need to use maybe one net, like a 10 micrometers in size. So why do companies continue to use these microplastics in their products? You know, because working with the plastic is so easy. And before they were working with the natural um, seeds from the fruit, but everything that is natural need to be more careful, you know? And then what the plastic is not. So basically, doctor, humans are the ones that are contributing to this problem. Definitely, yes, we are the source. Always we are thinking we need to stop the source for the plastic. And what is the source? We are the source. So people at home can look on their labels of their products and see if it'll have microplastics in them, right? Yes, they can see, they can read in the ingredients in the products and they can read the polyethylene or PE. This is the plastic and you can find it in the shampoos and the toothpaste, in the screw for the face, in all, too many different kinds of cosmetic products that you can find the plastic micro bits. When our Great Lakes adventure continues, we're gonna go sampling for some microplastics. We'll be right back. Now it's time for Aqua Quiz with your host, Drew Cruz. I'm your host, Drew Cruz, and it's time to test your knowledge with another Aqua Quiz. Microplastics are small plastic particles in the environment that generally measure less than one millimeter down to the micrometer range. They can come from a variety of sources. Can you name some of the sources of microplastics? A, cosmetics. B, clothing, C, industrial processes, D, plastic litter, E, toothpaste and facial scrubs, or F, all of the above. I'll have the answer after the break. Welcome back. Can you name some of the sources of microplastics in our waterways? The answer is F, 
all of the above. Microplastics are easily ingested by fish, mussels, and other sea animals, and there is growing scientific evidence linking them to the passage of deadly and persistent chemicals throughout the environment. We'll see you next week with another Aqua Quiz. Welcome back to Aqua Kids. All right, so how do we deploy this? Okay, we just take it the, the manta in the middle and then take it, pull it up, yes, and we put it there. All right, hold on, let me get over there. All right, so now what? Uh, yes, you just, and we can put it in the manta first. Just careful with it. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we go, we go, we go. Just make sure that there's some that is floating. Uh, 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 uh. The manta now is in the water, and you can see how the mouth of the manta is just like a filter, just the water. And you can see the net at the end. We have one cone, yeah. and then everything is uh, stopped there. Okay. Is the all the debris, natural debris, and microplastic, synthetic debris. So everything that you collect, you bring back to the lab? Yes, we, we can clean it up here first, and then we take it up everything that we have, and we put it in a jar, okay. in a container, a glass container, and then later we go to the lab, and we can observe under the microscope. So how long is this supposed to stay in the water? They stay one hour, is that we are thinking, you know. How often do you guys do this? Uh, now that we are doing, we set up um, what's water treatment plant in Duluth, what's water treatment plant in Superior and in the lake, in San Luis River Lake, Estuary. We have the samples there and we have a, we are collecting samples in the two harbors and we are going to the Washburn, Ashland and Bayfield. And this is the first time that we are doing in this area. Oh wow. Yeah. In 2012, I did the sampling, but in the Lake uh, Superior, Huron, uh, Lake Erie. So what did you find in those lakes? In the Lake Erie was when first time I saw these small and tiny pellets that is from the cosmetic products. Normally my area, study area is in the North Pacific Jar, in the ocean, and the pre-production plastic is bigger but the first time that I saw from the cosmetic products was in the Lake Erie. So do you think that the situation can get better? If we keep the information with the people, with the community, yes. Why? Because remember, if you are using plastic because you don't know that it's bad, yes? And then it was keeping the information to the people that the plastic is not really biodegradable or we can recycle it, all the plastic, and then the people stop to use the plastic. Or we can think that we need to start to using with responsibility the plastic. What does it mean that? That we need to reuse more the plastic, you know? Don't buy it new plastic. Use the same that you have already. Or just refuse to use plastic. When we take it back to the lab, will we see the microplastics in there? In the lab, yes. In the field, we cannot see it by naked eye. In the lab, we need to use the microscope, and then we can see them. All right, doctor, so it's been in for about an hour. Can we bring it on in? Yes, it's time. All right, so All Andrew, right. you got to pull it up. You got to sit here, buddy. All right. Let me help you, Andrew. All right, you want to get that go. side? I'll grab this side. Bring it to the back. Just careful with the... Then you see... What is that we collected is mainly the, uh, you can see is natural debris, yes. but we really don't know if we have a microplastic. Now the microplastics would be on the natural debris as well? Yes, we'll be here mixing. Mix it, yes, okay, it's mixed mixing, up. Yes, but that you can see it, but naked eye is the natural, natural debris, yes? Yes. All right, let's head back and see what we found. Aqua Kids will be right back. The Iberian lynx is the last remaining offshoot of the now extinct European lynx. It can be found on the Iberian Peninsula of southwestern Europe. This amazing feline may be the most endangered cat in the world. A fully grown lynx may be over 4 feet long and weigh nearly 30 pounds. Its diet is reliant on the ability to catch at least one rabbit per day. A nursing female may need up to three. An unusually specialized predator, the lynx can stand still, camouflage for hours before its unsuspecting prey wanders into pouncing distance. Decreases in the Iberian rabbit population, an inability to adapt its diet, and loss of habitat have crippled this truly remarkable creature. 
Find out what you can do for the Iberian lynx and other apex predators on our website. Want to keep up with our adventures? Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Welcome back to Aqua Kids. So, Doctor, we're going to take some samples from the beach now? Yes, we are collecting uh, sand there. We are doing one meter square, but I want that you observe how the lake is cleaning itself. And then you can see all this line is the water, and you can see how we have a plastic, plastic, and this is the uh, polyestyrene, you know, and you can see it, how the pellets is, uh, is forming. Yeah. yeah. And we can follow up all this, and look at this, this is one plastic, how it's here wow. is floating. All this, if we were taken with the manta, we can catch with the wow. manta troll. But you can see it's all the plastic that is floating. Let's take yeah. this out because this doesn't need to be in there. So even though all these plastics are washing up on the beach like this, after any rainfall event, they all just wash back into the lake, right? Yes, exactly. Everything is go back to the lake. And then you can see how this is like this. This is so tiny, microplastic. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And then this is natural, yeah, but this is plastic, see? Wow. wow, it's really everywhere if you just open your eyes a bit. Yeah, and then look at this, this is the pellets. Yeah. Yeah. So with the water coming up and the plastic's just laying right here, it's breaking down the plastics and it just goes back out in the water. Yeah, this is the mechanical breakout. Wow. You know, the, the mechanically, the plastic is breaking and breaking, and then you can see here in, in your side, yeah. yeah. How is all the plastic? All this Stay plastic. Here. Yeah. So in the ocean, there's constant wave movement. And does that mean the plastic out there is breaking down even faster? Yes, it will be faster because here the water is moving so soft. Yeah, and then wow. over there is breaking and breaking. Yeah. All right, doctor. So I guess it's time to take a beach sample. Yes. And then we need to mark one meter square and we put it this like a mark and we can see. If. All right. Let's Just get the going. surface. Okay. Okay, and then now that we need to it's just a scoop and sieve just the surface. Okay. okay. Yeah. So what I'm seeing here is that there's different uh, filter systems, and as it goes down, it gets smaller and smaller, and then the plastic gets caught at the bottom. Yes. Okay. What we are doing is just take it like this. You can put it in the center, and then we are doing this. Yeah. Wow. And then try to just follow one line. Yeah, and then what we are doing is just moving, yeah. And you see, everything that is bigger than um, almost uh, 4.75 millimeters stay here, yes? Yes. And then we can see the next, we need to see. Do you see wow. plastic? Yep, I do right here. It's a little piece of plastic right there. Some styrofoam bits, it looks like. Yeah, this, yes, maybe. Oh man, that is unfortunate. All right, so we're getting down to the final one. Let's see what we have. Just shake it like this, doctor? Yeah. Shake that plastic. <laughs> shake that plastic. <laughs> oh, shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. shake that plastic. <laughs> shake that plastic. All right, let's see what we have so far. Well, we still got some to do, but. Still some sand in here. I think we should keep shaking a little bit. Whoa, there is plastic in yeah, here though. Definitely see some microplastics there. We just a start. Yeah. And this yeah. is just the start. Yeah. Wow. Just imagine all the beaches in the world, how much sand there is, microplastic everywhere. Aqua Kids will be right back. For more information on today's show, go to aquakidstv.org. For me, it all started when I was um, I was 16 years old, and I was diving in Greece, and I realized I came across more plastic bags uh, than fish. My name is Boyan Slat, and I'm the founder and CEO at the Ocean Cleanup. We've developed world's first feasible method to clean up almost half the Great Pacific Garbage Patch in 10 years' time. 
uh, and we are currently preparing for the execution of the cleanup by 2020. Every week, uh, the volume of approximately two Empire State Buildings worth of plastic flow into the ocean. I wondered why can't we clean this up, uh, but I quickly realized that the ocean is quite big, so if you were to go out and start fishing for plastic, this would take about 79,000 years. So then I wondered why would you go through the ocean if the ocean can move through you? So I then envisioned uh, a network of extremely long floating barriers which, attached to the seabed, enable the plastic to concentrate itself. And because it looks kind of looks like a giant letter V, uh, the plastic moves towards the center and thereby becomes increasingly more concentrated. And that's the spot where we can then easily get it out of the water and store it before shipping it to land for recycling. At first, when I presented my, my plan, it was uh, you know, kind of tough. There weren't any people uh, assisting. Uh, we had about 300 euros of pocket money that I saved up uh, to just uh, get started. It suddenly went far on the internet. It was being shared millions of times, which, which then enabled uh, uh, me to... Um, and to assemble an initial team as well as uh, get the funding required to to get started. Um, if you have a very big and audacious dream that you want to fulfill, uh, it actually is a lot easier than if you try to solve uh, to initiate a project which isn't big and audacious because um, you know there's just really a, a lack of of big projects out there and you know, people are really eager to, uh, to join them. I'm Boyan Slat and I'm the founder and CEO at the Ocean Cleanup and you are watching Aqua Kids. Welcome back to Aqua Kids. Now we're in the lab and about to check the samples we caught with the manta. Let's see what's in there. Okay, and then the, you, uh, the first that we need to do it is to observe by naked eye if you can see plastic. Do you see something? No, I don't see plastic in there. No? Wait, 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 wait. Maybe I do. I think I do. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. Do you see plastic? Yeah. Okay, then. <laughs> no, I, think when I'm, I think we're seeing the same thing then. Okay, and then now that we need to do it is just to fold, you know, this push here. In and we can, uh -huh, and we can uh, put it, everything in the bowl. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you want to do it? Sh sure, I'll okay. do it. I'm roll my sleeves up, get dirty. Yes, just... You put it like that. See? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just push all over. Uh -huh. Yes. See? And then we have this. Take it all this. And normally, what we are doing too is using this a spoon. A spoon to yes. scoop the sides? Yeah. Now try to see if you can find some plastic by naked eye. We have this twist. Yeah, there, there's some styrofoam pieces right here. Yeah, and then that we are doing is going to the to the lab and on the microscope we can pick it up one by one. Okay. This is the, the work, yeah. I think Selena's around here already. Yep, she's already on the yep. microscope. <laughs> hey, Selena, what you looking at? Hey, I'm looking at microbeads. Microbeads? Mm -hmm. What are microbeads, Doc? Oh, this is from the cosmetic products. And like then in, this is like a for the scrub your face. Oh, in body scrubs. Mm -hmm. This is it? Mm -hmm. And then later we can find it in the ocean or in the lakes. Wow. Those, you found these in the lake? Yes, we found this in the lake, but let me show you this. This is from pre-production plastic. This is from one plastic industry. And you can see how the, these pellets can go to the dust. This and is where the size. These from? This is from California. And this is from the ocean, from the North Pacific Jar. And then you can see here how is the size. This is a microplastic because we don't know what is the whole uh, container of plastic. But this is very different that we found here in the Great Lakes, you see? Doc, this is obviously a problem, but what can people do at home to prevent this? The number one is you need to read the ingredients in the product that you are buying and whatever that say polyethylene, don't buy it because this is the plastic that you can see here, yes? And 
always try to say to the people that they need to use the plastic with responsibility. If they need to use just one plastic bag, just, just one, not 10, yes? Because it's free, it's not mandatory that they need to use more that they yeah. need it, yes? And if you don't need it to use any kind of plastic, don't use it. So guys, what do we learn today? I learned that the smaller the microplastics are, the more toxins they can accumulate, and that's harmful to the fish and other organisms that may consume them and mistake them for food. And I learned that people at home can read the ingredients in their cosmetic products to make sure they don't contain plastics. And I learned that we are one of the biggest contributors to plastics being in the ocean, and we are the ones that can put an end to it. Well, that's it for today's Great Lakes adventure, and we'll see you next time on Aquafades.